Okay, folks, um, this is the Vickery or the second price auction. So uh, what are the rules? Remember, for, for any auction has to tell us who is going to be the winner and who is going to pay what. All right. So here is the rules. Uh, here are the rules. Uh, bidders simultaneously submit their sealed bids. All right. So everybody is simultaneously uh, write on a piece of paper his or her bid and then put it in an envelope, seal it and give it to the auctioneer you know, the someone who is selling the object. So B1, B2, all the way up to Bn. Let's suppose these are the bids of the uh, players. Well, the highest bidder wins the object, all right? So whoever had the highest bid wins the object and pays the second highest bid, all right? Uh, all the others pay nothing or zero. Well, here obviously there's, you know, certain, uh, things that I omit, like what if, uh, for example, there are two uh, highest bid? Uh, well, in when the uh, valuations or the signals are distributed in a continuous probability distribution function, the likelihood of this event is zero simply, right? Uh, but for simplicity, if, if you nevertheless want to uh, make peace of uh, uh, this uh, scenario, you can just think, Whenever two guys, two bidders, have exactly the same bid, uh, we're going to toss a coin, a fair coin, all right? And so each bidder has equal probability of winning. Well, if there are five bidders who bid exactly the same amount and their bid is the highest, well, then again, those five guys have equal probability of winning the object, okay? Uh, what else? Well, in that scenario, where, for example, two guys bid 100, 100, and everybody else bid less than that, uh, 80, 70, 50, whatever. So uh, remember, this is the guy who uh, wins the object. So what is he going to pay? It's the second highest bid. So is it 100 or is it, is, it, is it 80? So the second highest or the highest losing bid. Well, remember, this is the winning bid. The losing bid, well, with some equal probability, this is going to win or this is going to win. But let's suppose this guy won. And so the highest losing bid is 100. Okay, so if this is the case, uh, the winning guy is going to pay 100 uh, when he wins the object. However, if he is the only guy who bids 100, uh, well, in this scenario, for example, he's going to pay 80. Okay, so you have to be clear about the rules. Um, but again, uh, you know, two guys are making a bid, uh, same thing is, you know, zero probability event uh, because our probability distribution function is, is continuous. Well, um, okay, so what is uh, then? So let's analyze this game. Well, in this game, what are the strategies, right? I mean, in, in, a, in a, any Bayesian game, remember, we have to be clear about who the players are. Well, obvious, uh, we have N uh, bidders. Uh, what are their strategies? Well, their strategies is, is bid. So they're going to make a bid, a number. So, all right, so BI is the strategy of a player and he is going to make a bid. Uh, well, where's this bid coming from? Well, remember, uh, everybody is going to uh, receive a signal and then they are going to make a bid. Obviously, we can allow uh, any bid you like, and you know, negative is, is, is pointless, so let's make it positive. If you can, you can make a very high bid, well, you're free to do that, but obviously nobody is going to make a bid higher than the valuation of the object, right? Because it, it, it doesn't really make much sense. So if you like, you can restrict it as, as lower bar, as upper bar up to you, I mean, as you wish. Okay, the strategies, the players are here. Well, what about the payoffs? Well, the payoffs are kind of simple. It just look at, look at the rule, all right? So the utility of I um, is basically the following, your valuation V of SI. Well, obviously there are different, uh, maybe I should have talked about before the uh, payoff function. Well, here, this is a game of incomplete information. So who are the types, right? Well, types are the, uh, basically the players or the bidders who receive, or, or the bidder I, for example, who receives uh, a signal S, 
right? So remember, signals are coming from in this interval, SI. So there are infinitely many possible signals you may get as a player I. And so therefore, for player I, there are infinitely many possible types. So type of player I is nothing but uh, the signal set. So every single signal in this interval is also a type for player I. Obviously, if, this is why I leave it as I. This is true for player one, player two, all the way up to player N, okay? So there are infinitely many uh, types. Although there are finitely many players, there are infinitely many types, okay? So therefore, how do we write the utility function? Now I think uh, we can make it a bit more formal. So or the payoff function of player I depends on his bid, obviously, and the other's bid, right? The other's, so this is his strategy, the other's strategy. So this is the strategy profile, but it also depends his own type. All right. Okay. So what is this? Well, this says V of SI, which is SI itself, remember, minus um, maximum of, well, let's, let's use argmax argmax, all right, uh, j different than i, bj. So remember, he pays, so this is his valuation for this object, and he pays the highest losing bit. And so I basically extract player i and look at all the other bid bidders whose bid is the highest. Well, that is, is going to be the, this arg argument that maximizes bj. All right. Well, obviously this is true if, if when uh, bi is greater than or equal to arg max bj, where j is not equal to i, right? I mean, if he had the highest bid, well, then this is true. Well, otherwise, oh, by the way, I'm going to ignore equality. Okay? Because if it is equal, remember, with an equal probability, he can win the object. But the thing is, how many other bidders have uh, bid exactly the same amount? And so is it going to be 1 over 2, 1 over uh, 3, 1 over 4? So that depends on how many uh, other bidders had bid exactly the same amount of BI. So let's save us uh, you know, lots of notation and pain and let's ignore equalities, all right? Trust me, for the auction theory, you can, unless we're talking about a very specific example with discrete you know, valuations and everything, well then, yeah, don't do that. But you know, in, in general setup, just ignore equalities uh, because again, it's a zero probability event. So therefore, it's never going to influence the uh, equilibrium. And so you shouldn't really worry about when you try to build up your notation. Uh, so this is true. Otherwise, what does that mean? That means uh, player I uh, wasn't the highest bidder. And so that means he loses, in which case he's going to win nothing. And so therefore, he's not going to drive any. So you drive utility only if you own the object, right? If you don't own the object, if you can't win the auction, obviously you get zero utility and you pay nothing. So zero minus zero. So it's just zero uh, otherwise. Okay. So that's basically and more formally. This is how we define the payoff function. So once again, given the rule of the uh, Vickery auction, uh, we have a game of incomplete information with n many players. Uh, infinitely many types for each player, and this is the payoff function for each player. All right, well, what is the equilibrium? Well, remember, this is a game of incomplete information. We usually look at Bayesian-Nash equilibrium as the solution concept. But for the Vickery auction, we're going to look at dominant strategy. Why is that? Well, because dominant strategy equilibrium. Here, I don't use the notion equilibrium uh, because I don't state the equilibrium. I just state that it is weakly dominant strategy for all players to bid their true valuation. So I'm going to reread uh, this, this statement. Uh, but the dominant, weak dominant strategy equilibrium is stronger than 
uh, Bayesian Nash equilibrium. Or put it differently, this equilibrium that I'm going to describe, uh, equilibrium strategy that I'm going to describe, is also Bayesian Nash equilibrium strategy. Okay, because again, weak dominant strategy uh, is, is stronger, or equilibrium is stronger than Bayesian Nash equilibrium. So, for that reason, for the Vickery auction, we look at the weak dominant strategy. So here's the theorem. I am going to prove it later. In a second price auction, the proof is very important, in a, or the solution of this, uh, of this uh, auction game is important. In a second price auction, it is a weakly dominant strategy to bid one's true value. B of SI, BISI is equal to SI. So if your valuation is SI, you're going to bid your valuation. No more, no less. Okay? Um, that's the theorem. Uh, that's the result. Um, don't forget, though, there are a bunch of other equilibria of the Vickery auction. All right? For, uh, th this is a symmetric uh, 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 equilibrium where all the bidders bid their true valuation. So, for example, um, so assuming that S lower bar, S upper bar is a 0, 100 interval, okay, let's suppose, and I have three uh, bidders. And so let's suppose bidder 1 gets signal S1, which is 50, S2 is 70, and S3 is 80, for example. Well, so uh, this theorem says, Player one is going to bid $50, player two is going to bid $70, and player three is going to bid $80. And so this guy is going to win, and his utility is going to be, the realization of the payoff is going to be 70, which is his valuation, minus, uh, I'm sorry, 80 minus 70, because it's the highest, uh, second highest bid. So he's going to get 10 utility. Uh, this is the realization. Uh, well, what else? Uh, I, I was I was planning to say something else. What was it? Um, I forgot. I forgot what I was planning to say. Um, well, but the well, 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 one one nice thing about the Vickery auction and the weak dominant strategy, it really doesn't matter uh, how the signals are distributed. Is it a normal distribution? Is it? Uh, um, uh, uniform distribution, it really doesn't matter because weak dominant strategy as an equilibrium concept doesn't care about the probabilities or the beliefs, all right? Um, so Bayesian Nash equilibrium is worried about beliefs, probabilities, but the weak dominant strategy doesn't care about those probabilities. So for that reason, it doesn't matter how the signals are distributed in this range. Uh, so whatever the distribution is, given the realization, uh, you know, in this very specific example, this is how they are going to bid. Uh, however, oh, okay, I, I, now I remember. I wanted to say that there's, this is a symmetric equilibrium in the sense that everybody bids his valuation. But there's also asymmetric uh, uh, equilibrium uh, in this game. So, for example, once again, consider that player one uh, receives this uh, signal, two receives this, three receives this. Well, it is also an equilibrium that player one bids zero, player two bids zero, and player three bids uh, 80, for example. All right, so that's also an equilibrium. Obviously, this equilibrium benefits player three much, um, I don't know why I called it S3, uh, this equilibrium benefits player three more than the previous uh, equilibrium. Um, but, well, I mean, don't forget, for any game, there might be multiple, bunch of different equilibria. All right? So this is one equilibrium. And when we check whether something is equilibrium or not, all we have to do, fixing the others, we just need to best respond each player. All right? Um, so here we just talk about one particular equilibrium. It's, it has a very nice property that everybody bids his own true value and it is weakly dominant strategy for everyone to do that. But don't forget there are a bunch of other equilibria as well. All right. So let's prove this theorem in the next episode.